All right. I want to talk about email newsletters. I don't know if you're already sending them. Uh, if not, uh, you may want to start. Um, even if you just start with, you know, 25 email subscribers, it's a good idea to do so because when people receive emails, the difference with seeing it on social media is that email is for most of us, a requirement to process, right? Because, and let me adjust my camera a little bit here, I'm working with a new camera. Let me know what you think. Um, so when we surf social media, it's optional. We, you know, you don't have to go through an X, X number of Facebook posts or YouTube videos or whatever. Uh, when it comes to email though, you get emails from, you got to pay the bills or you got, you got friends who ask you or invite you to something. You've got family members, you've got clients, you've got potential clients. So email is much more of a required um, way to process our information. And so therefore, when you send email newsletters, it goes most of the time into the same place or an adjacent place to where they are doing the required process. Um, now, the thing about email newsletters I've noticed is that most of the people I've worked with, my students and my clients, maybe some of you watching this, are working way too hard on your email newsletters. Now, what do I say that? Because it seems intuitive that your email newsletter should be exclusive content, like written as to a group of friends, right? Like that's the mainstream training out there about how to do a good email newsletter. Um, however, notice the way I do it. If you're on my email list, you'll notice it. And I, I can actually show you on the screen how I do it. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen with you now, in fact. Okay, here it is. And um, my website, sorry, let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. There you go, that's more how it usually looks. And my email newsletter, I'll show you the examples. Um, when you go to my website and you click on next to newsletter, you click on the drop down, you click archive, you'll be able to see the examples, the actual monthly newsletters that I sent. And you can see that they are <laughs> stupidly simple, you might say. Uh, it's basically the title of a recent you know, video or, or article. Um, you know, and then just a few words about it, basically copy pasting from the summary or from the introduction to that video or article, and then the link to go and watch it or to read it. Same thing, same, same thing. Just that's one piece, the next piece, same thing, title, um, introduction or summary, and then the links to read it, the link to watch it and, you know, title link to go and check it out. And then I have, um, an offer um, basically what I'm selling at, at the moment is at the bottom of the newsletter. And that's this, that's the same format. Let me go ahead and show you, uh, the previous month. Okay. Same format, um, title, uh, the introduction to what they would be reading on there. Cause I just copy and pasted. Okay. And then the video format, if I have something like that title post title, and then the, the the link to the video, and then um, what I'm selling at the moment. That's it. And my newsletter has double the open rate of my industry average. So it, it's working. People, and not and not just like suddenly. You know, it's been like that for ever since I've been using this format. It takes me 50, ten to fifteen minutes to to put together and send this newsletter. How long does it take you? Right? For most people, they're like, oh, I got to write some love letter to my subscribers. And then they work so, and I'm like, if you're going to work so hard on writing all that up and putting so much heart and soul into it, why don't you make it available to all of your social media audience and followers? Why are you doing it exclusively just to your newsletter subscribers? Well, George, it's obvious. If I do exclusive content, then they'll more likely subscribe to my newsletter and open it. Really? Okay, let's let's think this through here. That thing you spent so 
an hour. I don't know how long it takes you to write your love letter or letter to friends or whatever. That thing you spent, why wouldn't that thing, why wouldn't you let that thing be of benefit to more people? Well, George, that's it. I want it to benefit a lot of people. That's why I want them to subscribe. And, well, but the people who didn't subscribe won't see it, won't ever get to see it. You see what I mean? Like, I don't understand the logic here. No, 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 George, you don't understand. This is why they're going to hear about how great my newsletter is and then subscribe. But the, the piece of content you've created will have a limited lifespan of only those who were subscribed at the time and not an ongoing lifespan of reaching more and more people. Have you noticed that one of the most popular tools these days, it's gotten a lot of popularity in, in recent years, Substack. Do you notice how Substack works? Substack is a newsletter sending software and a newsletter uh, publishing community, okay? Because people can refer and recommend each other's newsletters. Notice how it works. The newsletters are, for most Substack uh, publishers, the newsletters are publicly accessible. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I before I I've been doing this model before Substack became popular, and I'm still doing the same model. It's like basically whatever you're going to create, don't do it exclusively for just the subscribers who were there at the moment. Make it available to all future subscribers. Do you see what I mean? And the way that I think is most efficient at doing that and most effective is to put your content that you work hard on, you, you, whatever content you've created, put it on social media and diff, whatever platform you want to engage with. That way, the, your social media followers have a chance to engage with it. And when they engage, they like it, they comment on it, they share it. It goes to more people. And then you reference those pieces in your email newsletter. I see the email newsletter as a free service of convenience to my audience, to people who say, George, I know I'm not going to catch much of what you post on social media just because of the algorithms and that's how it works. And, and you know, nobody scrolls forever until they see everything. Of course, they only see, scroll a few things and then they go on with their day or whatever. So George, I'm not going to see all the... So, I'm glad I can subscribe to your newsletter to see the best of your content that you sure you may have posted it elsewhere, but I, you know, because again, email inboxes are required for information processing these days compared to social media. It's required. So therefore I understand people say, Oh, email, email is so important. Email lists are so important because that's really, that's a reliable way of communicating with your audience. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's reliable because even with email, if you don't send newsletters that people want to open, they will stop opening them over time. Okay, the, that's one. And second, I've noticed that I don't tend to open newsletters. For, that's for me. I, I noticed that's true for all of you who subscribe to my thing too. I don't tend to open newsletters that have a long thing to read. <clears throat> Some of you do, and that's wonderful. That's great. But I like newsletters that I open it and I get a choice of what, what I want to keep reading or keep watching or something like that, okay? Guess what? It seems like you, you if you're subscribed to a newsletter, you're telling me that you like that too because my open rate is, like I said, double my industry average. My open rate's about 55%. My industry average is about 22%. The mean, meaning my peers and based on statistics, you know, what tracked by newsletter so software companies 22 percent i'm getting 55 percent open rate on average on average some of them sometimes 50 percent sometimes 60 percent on average for a for a, a fairly large yeah i mean not large but it's probably bigger than most of you my my subscriber uh my email list right now is about 5500 5500 so it's probably larger than most of yours as you well you don't might not know this but as your email newsletter grows towards you know, larger and larger into the thousands, your open rate tends to go down. So right now, if your open rate 60%, I'm going to guess it's smaller than my list. Okay. Your open rate, you know, as you get to three, four, 5,000, maybe it'll get, go down to 40, 30, 20%. Okay. And then onwards from there. 
So for the for a, a size, the list of my size, my open range relatively high. What I'm trying to say is that whatever I'm doing is working. It's working for a lot of heart based people, a lot of people who who are in my audience, people who have prioritized their values of heart and spiritual growth, personal growth, and they also um, tend to be they love learning, they love you know gathering knowledge, applying it to their lives, etc. I'm guessing that that probably describes pretty common with what your audience that you're trying to reach as well, right? So <clears throat> please work more lightly. That's all I'm saying. Work more lightly on your newsletter because, well, I know I'm just one data point, but um, you might want to give it a try over three months and see if it works maybe even better for you as well. Because remember, the content that you work on it deserves to benefit more people instead of locked in to your existing subscribers. I don't understand why that's a good idea. And your existing subscribers, when they they get a choice in your newsletter, your monthly newsletter, for example, they get a choice of what they want to click on instead of being forced to read whatever love letter you set them. They might not care, right? And they might not care about your personal updates or whatever, but if you give them several choices, they get to choose. And then when they choose, they then get to engage with that piece of content on social media if they're logged in. If they, But even if they're not logged in, they should still be able to see it because you'll notice in my newsletter, everything goes to a public piece of content that they can engage with even if they're not logged in. But if they are logged in, right? Like, because you know, some of you might say, well, George, you know, my, uh, what if my followers don't, uh, don't use Facebook or don't use Instagram or don't use YouTube, LinkedIn or whatever. YouTube is public, you know, it's always public. But, there are public formats of those posts on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. You'll see it in my newsletter. It's all public. So even if you're not logged in, you can still at least watch it or read it or whatever. And then people who are logged in, who have an account, they can engage with it. And their engagement further expands the visibility of that content that I, that I worked on. Why not? Again, please describe below why you're still doing it you know, the inefficient way, okay? Your newsletters, again, people, okay, okay. so so one more um, block that people have. Well, George, I don't know why people would subscribe to my email newsletter if all my content's already on social media. All right. The, more, <laughs> the simple word is convenience. People pay a lot of money for convenient things, right? I mean, a lot of the products and services you buy in your own life are due to convenience. Oh, this I'm paying for this because it's more convenient. Well, your newsletter is maybe maybe you pay charge for it. I, I don't charge for mine. It's a free service of convenience for my followers, and they love it. I've already told you my numbers. So <clears throat> here's the thing: when people like your content, they they're the right fit for your content. They can't wait to see. They, they want to make sure they keep up with the best of your content. Okay. That is the value proposition of your newsletter. If you want the best of my content, you can get it through email instead of hunting for it on social media because that's what it is. If they, if they want to see, like there are some followers, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see their stuff. But then I have to like make sure I find their stuff on social media. It's not convenient. I But then when they have a newsletter, I'm like, oh, great. I can just wait until it comes in and I can click on the ones that I want. You see? Um, so, and then another common block is, well, what if they see it more than once? They saw it on social media and then now they get it through the newsletter as one of the, uh, great. They probably didn't even read it or watch it when they saw it on social media. They just go, oh, that's a good one. I'm going to save that post. Or I'm, oh yeah, I'm gonna, you know, gotta make sure to look at that later. And then now when they come see it on, on email, they're like, oh, that's right. It's a good reminder. Or, or they enjoyed it before. They're like, oh, great, I get to see it again. People are, have so much information in their lives that they don't mind being reminded of something that they enjoy, that, they, that was valuable to them. They either see it again or, oh, I'm, I'm so glad I'm reminded to go and check it out finally because I didn't do it last time when I saw it. 
please work more lightly because this way, if you work more lightly on your newsletter, you'll more likely sustain the consistency of your email sending. And I have been consistent with my email newsletter since, well, gosh, I don't know when, um, at least for 10 years. Last 10 years, I've been consistent with sending email newsletters. And it's not a surprise that my open rates have just gone up over the, I'm grateful that my open rates have gone up over the years because they can trust me to keep showing up every month. And so I wish the same for you. Do not break the chain of sending your email, even if it's a 25 people. It's 25 people for now. But once they engage with your content on social media, how does your audience grow? How does your email newsletter grow? And I'll say this for two minutes before we end this video. I don't use lead magnets. I have a separate video for that that I invite you to go watch. You can search my YouTube or George Cow lead magnet, and you'll find my article and YouTube video about that. The way I grow my email list is by providing authentic, relevant content. Okay, authentic, relevant content on a consistent basis. I have another video about that called the ARC of Content Creation, ARC, authentic, relevant, consistent. I do it on the, you know, I, 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 that's what I do. And then people enjoy my content. They come to my website. They, they see that there's a newsletter. They join intentionally. No wonder my open rate's so high. And no wonder my, my list keeps growing over the years. They join intentionally. They enjoy it. They engage with the content on social media, which then further spreads it to more people, which then come to my website and say, gosh, I really like what this guy's saying. Let me go ahead and subscribe. I don't have an opt-in page. I don't, I'm sorry, I have an opt-in page. I don't have a pop-up. I don't have an opt-in thing on my homepage. No, it's a very intentional joining process. And therefore, it's a true intention to continue reading and engaging with the content. That's how you grow a real email list that actually pay attention to you and actually uh, spread your stuff and often buy your stuff over the years. So please work more lightly so you can work sustainably. It takes me 10 to 15 minutes every time I create and send a newsletter. I hope it takes you around that amount of time. So it's like, oh, it's so easy. Oh, time to send my email newsletter. It's a very pleasant process. I don't have to create anything new because whatever I create new, it's going to go and have that, the lifespan span can be long for that piece of thing that I create. Uh, last thing I'll say is don't use your newsletter to test content. Your newsletter sh should be the best of your stuff. I mean, just model what I do. If, if, you know, it's what I do is obviously working for me. I really enjoy it. I teach it all my Model what I do. Your newsletter should be the best, not not test, not test. You should be testing content on social media. That's what social media is good for. It's for testing content. The algorithm is very, very much very helpful for that. If it's good content, they'll they'll show it to more people. If it's not so good content, they'll bury it. Not not very many people will see it. The out let the algorithm help you on social media, and then the, you'll notice the best of. You put it into your newsletter. It's very simple. So I hope this is helpful. I hope this allows you to. Send your newsletters regularly going forward and lightly, and therefore grow your authentic business over months and over years like I've continued to do. So I wish that for you. Thank you for watching.